Hello, this is the Mystic Kitten. My name is Michelle, and here we are. Uh, come get ready with me. So, as I stated in the last one, um, it takes me a bit to get ready, and it's kind of wasted time, right? And I wanted to give you guys the opportunity to get to know me better, and so I thought this is the perfect time for me to just chat. Maybe talk about what's on my mind, maybe talk about something that's been bothering me, or whatever. And give you guys the opportunity to kind of get to know me better, and, you know, maybe you will connect better to the readings if you have a better feel for my energy. So... <sighs> I kind of, what I want to talk about today is really pissing me off. Like it's really driving me nuts. But here's the thing. So I know with the topic that I'm going to hit on today, it's, it's like kind of controversial. And the reason why it's controversial is because it's so... Like, it's such a big thing right now. It's coronavirus, obviously. The biggest thing that's going on in the world right now. Um, I don't want to talk about my opinions, my theories, how I feel about it, anti-mask, mask. That's not what I'm here for. At all. Um, you do what's right for you, you're going to feel... I mean, I'm not here to shape your opinions on your own beliefs in any way, shape, or form. I have my belief sets, you have yours, you know, I don't believe that any of these platforms should be used as a way to skew people's way of thinking or anything like that. So just be advised, that's not what this is. Um, I d also don't want to hit on any of the conspiracy theories because I don't want to cultivate a platform for more of that. Um, I like to kind of be an area where you can come and, and get lost in the tarot readings and not have to worry about kind of what, what's going on for the 10 or 5, 10, 15, 30 minutes, whatever it is. Um, but this is really bugging me. So I'm going to talk about it. Um, if you followed my channel at all, you know that I am a single mom. I'm a single mom of three kids. Um, and so this whole coronavirus thing has been, it's been very impactful. It's been very impactful on a lot of different, like, levels, right? So... Not only has it been very impactful for me personally, I, I started dating somebody during COVID, well, not really during COVID, but like as the onset came on, we started like dating and, and whatever, and we had to navigate our relationship through this, which has been, um, it's been, a, it, it's been its own challenge and, you know, starting any new relationship is always challenging to begin with. And then you throw something like this madness on it, and that's great. Um, but for as hard as I see, like for as difficult as this whole last year has been on for me personally, what I have realized is it's actually far harder on my kids. Um, and it's because, you know, as children, you have certain expectations on certain things, you know, and you see, especially like in my scenario, my eldest is 16, almost 17. My middle daughter is 10, almost 11. And my youngest is eight, almost nine. They have all their birthdays at the very beginning of the year. So February, March, April. And... So when I say almost, I mean like damn close. Um, 
I've seen my youngest, who seems to be the most emotional out of all my kids, um, go through a roller coaster with this. And I mean, she went from... There were days when we were in lockdown in March and they were hauled out of school and our lives stopped. Um, at the beginning, we went through stages where she was very um, angry. And then she went through stages where she was very sad because she felt like she was missing out on her schooling and, you know, creating friendships and all of those things. And then she actually went through a period of time where she was almost happy about it. Because I was home with her, and so it was, you know, the four of us girls fighting the world together, and um, I tried to put, like, a hero spin on it, right? Like, this is how we can do our part, and we have to stay home so that we can do our part and be the superheroes we need to be for the real heroes who are the frontline workers and blah, 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 right? Um... So we went through that whole thing, and, I mean, she dealt with it like a little champ as best as she could. She was young enough that, though it affected her, it didn't happen at a pivotal point in her life. Now, bear with me. You're going to understand why I started with the youngest. So then we get to the middle daughter, who... Leaving the school environment wasn't super hard for her. She didn't love it. But I didn't get, like, a shit ton of resistance from her. Um, the online schooling, too, she really enjoyed it because she could do it kind of at a, a faster pace. And so she enjoyed that. Um, and, yeah, she liked being home. She liked being able to go and play outside. And, I mean, it was... In March, when lockdown happened, at least in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, it was it was very lax. Like, it was known. The kids knew that they weren't going to fail. They didn't even have to do the schooling, and they weren't going to fail. So there was a relaxed feeling, at least for my kids. There was, like, it wasn't as rigid right now don't get me wrong I was home so they did their schoolwork <laughs> but you know I wasn't rigid about it and if they wanted to kind of slack off on like a Thursday afternoon or whatever I just let them and then we make up on the weekend or whatever right like it was fine we I kept them at par but we did it at our own pace and you know I I guess I did allow them to take their time and whatever, but you have to remember I'm not a teacher and I'm not a teacher for a reason and it's because my patience level isn't super high. So I'm a Leo and I'm a Scorpio. So. Patience is not a virtue of mine, and neither is, like, mediocrity. So, if you're going to do it, do it, and do it well, and do it right the first time. Don't fuck around, and don't piss around, and I don't want to hear I can't do this. You can't do it because you're not doing it. You're not, like, you're not applying yourself. So, if you're not going to apply yourself, then let's step back. You know, give it an hour, give it two hours, give it till tomorrow, whatever. But when you're ready to to go back and to hit this head on and to do this at that point, you need to be ready to give it 100%. That is what I expect from you. I understand that not everybody can give 100% all the time. That's unrealistic. But when you come to the dinner plate, I expect you to bring your appetite is basically the way I look at it. So, I taught them that way. And, I mean, they, they all did fairly well. They did as good as they could, given the circumstances, given the situation. Um, now that's too high, naturally. And so Marilyn did, did well that way. 
Now, where Marilyn, that's my middle daughter, where she did not do well was with the lack of family that she had. Um, not being able to hug and kiss her grandmother and her nana and her grandma Janet. Um, not being able to hug and kiss aunts and uncles. Not being able to interact with people when they would come to have curbside visits. Um, now Marilyn was very lucky because her birthday fell right, like as things were starting to enter Canada. And then my eldest, her birthday hit like the weekend before lockdown. So my eldest and my middle child got to have a birthday party last year and my youngest didn't. And it was devastating for her. Um, we made the best of it as we could. I had everybody come and they lined up in cars on the street. We had the fire truck go by. We honking and hooting and hollering and they everybody brought her many, many gifts. But you couldn't hug anybody. You couldn't, you, you couldn't do anything. And that was, it was so different than how they've always been raised. And so that was a very challenging moment in Maria's life, my youngest. Now, moving on, Marilyn didn't do well with this lack of family-ness. So now we have my eldest. And this, this is where I get mad. And I don't get mad at her. I get mad at what's happened and I get mad for her. So my eldest is a very level-headed young lady. She has a very good sense of self. I have raised my daughters to understand and be able to clearly, clearly identify what they're feeling and what their emotions are. Because if you can't identify how you're feeling, then you can't, you can't start to look into the whys you're feeling that way, right? So I made sure that at a very young age, we started working with like colors and emotions and feelings and stuff so that I could always, when my child looked at me and was angry and said, mom, I'm angry. I knew that my child knew what it meant and that she wasn't just frustrated, but she was actually angry with the situation, if that makes sense. So... You know, it, it was hard for Morgan, of course, as it was for all of us. It wasn't a, I mean, this isn't a cakewalk for anyone, by any means, by any means. But, you know, she really did try to do her best and keep a st stiff upper lip and, and understand that, you know, like there was, it was out of our hands. There was nothing we could do to change it or whatever. And she did very good with that until we went into this last lockdown. And the reason that it upset her was because she was just starting to feel some sense of freedom. And by freedom, what I mean by that is, you know, we had settled into what was our, and I'm going to tell you having to say this makes me want to puke the new normal <clears throat> so she had settled into what was considered the new normal and though it might not have been perfect and though it might not have been whatever else we had got at least parts of our lives back At least parts of it. We could have social distance visits where you stay far enough away and, you know, you do your due diligence. We could do that. We 
the kids were in school. They had been back in school since the beginning of the school year. Um, so that was a sense of normalcy. I mean, you've got a fucking mask on your face the whole time. So yeah, that doesn't feel real fucking normal. But at least you were there. And at least um, it gave you back bits and pieces of your life. So here's how I feel about the masks. A quick interlude. I'm going to digress. Follow me down the rabbit hole. So here's how I feel about masks. I hate them. I have face, I have skin issues. Um, on top of having skin issues, I have anxiety. Um, and on top of that, I'm claustrophobic. So putting this mask on my face and going into like Walmart for 45 minutes where everybody is pissed off and pushing and nasty and I'm telling you, this is not a good time. Michelle is not having a good time, but I do it because that mask allows me allowed me to live my life. And if it took me putting a mask on my face to be able to have some of my life back, then I'll do it because I was desperate to get some of my life back. And so I did. I wore my mask, my friend, my wonderful, amazing friend who is just one of the most kind hearted humans I've ever met and so thoughtful and so amazing has been diligently making masks for her family and for those she loves. And I am blessed enough to be in that category. So I get some of the most amazing masks from this beautiful soul. For all occasions, I have Halloween masks. I have Easter-ish kind of masks. I have Christmas masks. I have Hogwarts masks. I have masks with cats on them to feed my witchy desires. Um, okay, so her Etsy store is Prairie Turtle. She makes some of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Please go check her out. Um, support local. Uh, buy Etsy. If you're not, it, like, if you can't find it local, support Etsy. Support you know, these people who through this ridiculous pandemic has somehow found a glimmer of hope and have opened these little online stores and die, dove into, you know, their passions and the things that make them feel good. Support those people because, um, They fucking need it. They need it. Right? Okay, I, like, really digress. So anyways, hate the masks. Wear them. Do what I have to do to fight the good fight. But I don't like them. I don't like having them on my face. Not even a tiny little bit. So. Back to Morgan, my eldest. Well, we go back into lockdown. Right before Christmas, the high school kids and junior high kids are mandated to learn from home again. And it was heartbreaking for them. It's heartbreaking for me to see it. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional which you won't see very often, but with my kids, it's hard for me not to. Um, 
So we go back into lockdown. Like the rest of the world, I'm sure. No Christmas plans. You can't spend those days with the people that you love most. Um, threats, threats of fines and like canine units and madness. Absolute madness. Kids get to go back to school, finally. After an additional week of online learning after school break goes back in and my daughter isn't quite herself and so you know after a little probing and, and pestering as us mothers do from time to time um, she feels robbed she feels like her 16th year, which is supposed to be such a magical year for kids. It's a year where you start to really develop as a young human. Um, you usually go to your first parties. You push your limits a little bit. You're finding new boundaries because you're not a kid anymore, but you're not yet a you know, an adult. She's pissed. Because that year, an imperative year, has been taken from her. But it's not even just that year that's been taken from her. Because there's no fucking end in sight. That's the problem. That's the problem. There's no end date on this. And with no end date, there's nothing to look forward to. And with them putting us back into quarantine again, it makes her wonder how many more times we're going to have to go into lockdown. How many more years is going to be stolen? And she's pissed. And I'm broken hearted for. So the moral, the reason that I decided I was going to come on today and I was going to talk to you guys about this, it wasn't just because it's pissing me off that this has robbed so much from so many. It's not just that. I mean, that's part of it. Um, but the bigger part of it for me is because when I look at my analytics, it tells me that the age range that watches me. And I have a very, the bulk, the bulk of my viewers are younger. They they hit in, in some of the younger brackets. So the 18 to 25, 26 to 30 range. So chances are I've got a few teens that are about my daughter's age watching. And I don't know if everybody has somebody in their life that will look at them and say, Hey, what's going on right now? Really fucking sucks. It really fucking sucks. And I'm mad too. I'm mad because some of my life is taken away from me. I'm mad too because there's no end in sight. There's no way to know if we're getting whole truth, half truth, what. There's no way to know.
I'm mad too. <clears throat> Because we can't just say no. We can't just say no. I'm not living this. I'm choosing to not live this. I am choosing that this specific event does not get to be a part of my world. No. Nope. I'm choosing no. I'm mad that we don't get to choose no. I'm mad that I wake up and I put my face on and then rather going to the office with the amazing people that I work with and people that keep me sane, I have to sit at my desk in my house and be alone. And I can't say no. And I'm pissed. I'm pissed because Sports have been taken away from my children. I'm pissed because somebody else gets to tell me what is essential and what isn't. I'm pissed because My hands are tied and there's nothing I can do to make it better for my children or myself. I'm pissed because nobody asked me if this was what I wanted. If this was okay with me. I'm not delusional. I know that wanting to be part of the decision-making process in this specific situation is unrealistic and was never going to happen. I'm not saying that it should have happened. I'm saying I'm pissed because it couldn't happen. That it so greatly affected my life and I had zero say. no say I couldn't say yes I couldn't say no I couldn't say can we try this I had zero say and that is why I'm really pissed so I'm here to tell you if you're pissed it's okay You should be mad. And if you're sad, it's okay. Pretty sad too. And if you are feeling lonely, I am here to tell you that there are so many of us who are so lonely right now and I can guarantee you that somebody you know and love is feeling exactly how you're feeling right now and they would love nothing more than for you to pick up that phone and call them and say I was thinking about you and I'm lonely and I need you because when we're lonely 
one of the most amazing things that we can hear is that we're needed. Seems simple. It almost seems insignificant, really, in the grand scheme of things. You would think that that, that simple phrase would do very little. But really, to somebody who's hurting, to somebody who's depressed, to somebody who doesn't think that whether they're here or not matters, the simple words, I need you, the simple words, I love you, the simple words, I care, can and will completely change their fate. So you may not know me, you may not think I care, but let me reassure you that when I tap into your guys' energy every week, I care. I take time out of my life. I stay up late on nights that I have to work. And I do it because I enjoy it. Don't I, I would never try to sugarcoat or lie about that. I enjoy reading cards. I enjoy connecting with your with your guys' energy. A hundred percent I do. But what I like even more than that. is the idea that I am moved to do this reading just like I was moved to do this get ready with me and it's already over 30 minutes long because I haven't finished yet um, I do it because I care I want to reach whoever these messages are meant for. I want to help whoever I can. I have been depressed. I battle with depression on a regular basis. I know it's not fun. I know how hard it is. And I know how lonely it is. And so if I can help to alleviate somebody's loneliness because they sit and maybe they listen to my readings before they go to bed and it makes them feel like they're not going to bed alone. Or maybe they need to hear from a loved one that won't reach back out to them or whatever the circumstance is. The idea that I could very well be helping, it means more to me than I could ever express. Because these readings give me a higher purpose. And so by doing these readings, I feel a sense of pride that I'm doing something to give back. So, again I say, if you find yourself in a situation where you feel like nobody cares, if you have stumbled upon this, if you have shared your energy with this channel in any way, shape, or form, 
You need to know I care. You need to know I feel your energy. I know you're there. And your energy matters to me and my, my channel and this community of amazing people that I'm building from this channel. I have acquired some pretty amazing people within the tarot community from this channel. Um, and I just, there's somebody there who cares. Just please remember that. Please remember that. Okay, I have to try to make this one look the same, guys. So just give me a second. Uh, all right, well, they're definitely not twinning today. Let's see if we can get them to be in the same bloodline. I love that liner, by the way. It's the Kat Von D uh, tattoo liner. Fucking love it. It is such a game changer in in way of like, I don't, it is, don't get me wrong, it, it is a, um, like a, a liquid eyeliner. But what I think I like more about that one than I do like a lot of other ones, and I actually have another one I'll show you in a second. It's not Kat Von D. The Kat Von D I like best because it stays on best. Like I find that it definitely has staying power that maybe some of the other brands don't, they just can't, they can't perform like her makeup does. Um, I love, I love her line. A line I really want to try um, is Lena Gomez's line, Rare. I really am very intrigued to see what that, what her line is like. Um, I'm hoping to be able to get some of that now that we're into the new year and start to play around with it and see see what it's like I've heard really really great things about it so yeah I have this one which is and I have this one and this one's by Q which is a um, shoppers drug mart line here in Canada what I like about those is they're they're considered a marker and uh, I do like an eyeliner marker better than your traditional liquid. I don't mind a gel. I like a gel. I've used gel a lot as well. And I do like the gel. But I think if I had to pick what I like for a wet liner, what my preference would be, it would be the marker. Now, keeping in mind, I do always seal my liquids in with a black eyeshadow powder. Um, it's just, my mom was an esthetician and so I say was like she was like, she's dead. She's definitely not dead. I'd be fucking lost without my mother, but, um, I do, uh, I do have a lot of my makeup traits that were brought from her days being an esthetician. Um, so yeah. So that's my thoughts on the coronavirus and how it's okay to be mad. You're not alone. Everybody's really pissed off about it because it's bullshit. So with that being said, I'm going to finish up my face and I will get to those readings. But thank you for taking your time and sharing, sharing it with me while you got ready for your day. And until we meet again, blessed be. Bye guys.